Hey, my loves, welcome to another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and comment because I love to bump gums with you. Hope you enjoy. Hello, gorgeous. Welcome back to the Give Them Lala podcast. As you know, I never in all my lives have guests, but of course, I had to have Heather McDonald on. Woo-hoo! One of my one of my nearest and dearest friends, and no one makes me laugh harder than you do. Well, thank you. I'm very <laughs> thrilled to be here. So professional. Love you all. Excited. You came to Ocean's birthday party. Of course I did. It's my third time coming. I've gone I, to all three birthday parties, so I'm like a OG VIP Ocean. Even wore the hat. She had the OG merch. Yeah, she did. She was I, the OG I, merch. I had the Ocean give them Ocean from the first party, which was an Ocean theme mermaid <laughs> yep. theme. Yeah. Party. You're going to be at all of them. And now okay. you're going to have to add another one. Which I'm totally excited. I love I love a kid party. Um, it was so cute and it was so fun. Good. I'm and so I ha- love, love the new house and everything. I feel like there's, it was just good energy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm very happy. I'm excited to bring a new baby home to that space. I love watching all my reality TV shows in that space. Feeling like a queen. Have you thought about, like, how you're going to do... Like, I okay, you know when you, like, like something, then the the algorithm knows what you love? Yeah. So, one of the things I love is, like, soldiers surprising their kids and wives coming home and their moms. The other one is... Toddler meets the new baby for the first time <gasps> oh. videos. Have you seen those? No. Oh, oh my God. Melt my heart. Where they're like, the little kid comes in and it's like, he's just my baby. Like, it was <laughs> just like, oh. yeah. Wait, you, will you definitely start, have to do that. I'll start, you start sending, sending you. know I send you me? a lot of stuff, so I'll start sending you even that. Okay, start sending me those. Yeah. And because my, I haven't been on Instagram, as I was just telling yes. you, like, I... This pregnancy is different in the sense, like, I, I have energy. I'm having to go out and still work and do all of those things, which is very different from when I was pregnant with Ocean. But I'm I'm very sensitive, so I don't, I don't get on, sensitive. Emotionally okay. sensitive. And I don't want to see what people are saying about me. So I have steered clear of the internet. I get on to Instagram to post what I need to post. And then I kind of, like delete the app and then if I need to post something again I re-download the app <laughs> post it and then delete it again <laughs> so I don't go in you know because you co- become robotic just going in and you're scrolling and you don't even know how it happened well so, I mean you're at a level where if you were just on Instagram you know you could see an article or you follow a blog that might say something about you um there were times like there were these hate groups that I'd had to actually go to read the hate about me and I I feel like you, sober. I'm March 23rd. No, December 23rd was the last time I looked. Yeah. On the hate groups. Good. About myself. But it was so addictive. And What do you my, mean hate groups? Like like, like Reddit. She like went hate, on like Reddit. Like dedicated oh. hate groups. Oh. oh, on like Reddit, not Instagram. There's not like pages no, that No, but there's hate. Facebook. Jeez Louise. Okay, keep going. There's, got too much time. there's some stuff like that. Okay. And... I never experienced it until the last six months. And so I I was just, like, shocked to, like, read it. And, like, I kind of couldn't get enough. Like, I'd be out, and then I'd come home, and it'd be like, I was, like, you know, getting up a pipe together or something. I just couldn't <laughs> stop reading it. Yeah. And then when I finally was like, I'm, I don't ever want to see this again. I don't want anyone sending anything from it again. I'm never going to look at it again. It, I literally treat it like, like a you know, a step or like, I'm going to get a chip. Right. And I almost feel like the feeling of it is, and I've never experienced this, so I don't know, but someone just said is this, this, maybe this is what it's like when someone's like a cutter or something. I don't know where they like an emotional cutter. They They feel, they want to feel something. They want to see it. And it's like, yeah. And so I think it's great. There's no reason why you need to see it. I did see one comment about you, and it was, tell Lala, ask Lala why her skin looks so beautiful. Aww. I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but in the show, you're not pregnant yet. Oh, in the show. In the show, you look, I mean, you look beautiful in person, but in the show, you, your makeup and skin and stuff does look particularly good in these last few episodes. You that did is really all kind. fresh. You did, I did notice, versus the seasons before, you were 
way lighter on the makeup or no makeup at all. Oh yeah, maybe you're not way doing more all simple. Like the, that was the whole thing. I feel for like this. you're not doing all like the beat face and the yeah. shading and stuff. I'm not. Well, this season I'm not. Like this season, you don't I went it. into it. I was like. I don't want to do my clip-ins for every scene. I don't want to bleach my hair. I'm done with the lashes. I'm done with it all. I want dewy skin, some mascara, it's, it's and a working. highlighter. It it's working. working. All your looks have been great. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I think when you... I think it's one thing to, like... We were talking about this earlier. Um, like, I have my my DM set up where only check marks can get in, but there's a few that sometimes slip in. And those, I'm like, if I... If I happen to click on those and they're not very nice, I can sit there and be like, I really don't give a fuck about what you say, right? But when you start seeing that a page has posted about you and opened the public forum for people to slide into the chat, it immediately makes me feel exposed and vulnerable and I have to run away. Yeah, it's... It's bad. It's, you know. Yeah, it's hard. Wait, Heather, can I ask really quick, with those pages, just because I'm curious, um, when you would read, you said it like almost like an addiction, when you would read the comments, the mean shit, would you get like some sort of high after and then the next day get really sad thinking about it and miserable? Or would it, what was it? Well, one of the things is that, you know, the things would be so ridiculous and wrong and wrong information and wrong things about me Mm -hmm. that I would inadvertently like correct it like on my show the next day. Mm. Yeah, okay. like you and, find yourself they, talking about that. And then they it. love that, you know? Like, why am I even addressing this stupid thing that's not true? And I'd be like, oh, some of you guys seem to think that, and that's not the case. The case is I happen to be there for another event, and did it because they'd be like, that thirsty bitch showed up to whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I was like, no, I was invited for weeks prior. It was like, why am I explaining my fucking life? Right. And then, and then what was bad is when my teenage son found it, and I was like, literally, like, don't read it. You're going to get, like, indoctrinated. Like, you're going to start to eat too. <laughs> no. And then, and then at one point, we we got to the pay- place where we found it funny. Uh, because right. it was literally every Instagram post, they'd pick apart my outfit. They'd take the post and think about my outfit, whatever. So I had this, like, really fun yellow Trina Turk, like, very 1960s outfit and I wore it, and we celebrated my niece's birthday at Nobu in Palm Desert. Okay. And so we had this great time, whatever. And then one of the posts was, imagine if this thing was your aunt. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> so then yesterday for, for Easter, I wore it to brunch at our, at our little club in our community there. And my niece came, who's 16, it was adorable. And I walked up and I go, imagine if this thing was taking you to Easter bread. And like, we laugh about it now. So right. there's like nothing, like you get to a place where you're like, these people are losers. Right. But did, was the pain and everything real? Which are now, of course. No, because you overexposed the- yourself to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so. You're being you know, like waterboarded with really mean right, shit yeah. about you. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like one thing to see like. One comment about, like, imagine if this thing were your aunt. Like, yeah, I can laugh about that, too. I can laugh about one comment about my eyebrows and my hairline. If I see it 500 times, though, I'm going to be like, oh, how hits. do I get them to not do that? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, there's explain. some things physically that these trolls go after. And I saw it with your cast members, too. And I'm like, there's nothing someone can do about that. No, like, it's not even like, like you can't, it's not even something like, oh, I could get a nose job or, oh, I could fix my teeth. There's sometimes there's physical stuff that's like, that is just how God, like, there's no fixing that. Like, it's like saying that someone's short. Mm. Okay, well, what do you want me to do? Cut my legs in half and put a <laughs> pin in there? Like, I mean, there's just certain things or you're old. Yeah. Well, I, I, the age thing is wild passes. to me. As yeah, if we sorry were all, that I was like, born on the year I was born. Like, it, go take it up with my dead parents. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, what do you want me to do? Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, the, the other thing I saw that someone said was like, why are you getting into a conversation with someone like they're at your level when they really are literally a troll in a basement? I mean, there's trolls that you can go back and forth with. Those are not bots. And then there's just the mean comments that are the bots mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. There's a combo. But, like, why are you even trying to talk to this person? And then there's sometimes fans that were a fan, and for whatever reason, they turned on you. And there's that, too. And then you're like, goodbye. Find another person to enjoy. Like, it's not—obviously, you're not into me anymore. I'm not going to try to convince you. 
I don't know what happened or where you stopped liking me, but like, it's not my problem anymore. No. And I find that those people turn into the people who I worry about them coming in my house, skinning me and then wearing my, my corpse. Around. I mean, they're, they're obviously <laughs> like, <laughs> obs- <laughs> they're obviously obsessed, you know, if they're taking this time. And so, yeah, you know, um, it is kind of weird. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I get it. I get it's it. It's such a fun job that we've all placed ourselves in. <laughs> so I have two game changers to share with you when it comes to upping your glam game. I am totally obsessed with Impress No Glue Manny's and Impress Press On False Eyelashes because I'm very into just easy right now and anyone can do it. You are going to love them just as much as I do. Both require zero glue, so there is no damage to your natural nails and lashes. There's also no annoying dry time. And the best part, zero mess. One step and you're done. The lash style options are endless, and there are so many on-trend nails to choose from. Impress, no glue manis, and press-on falsies are the easiest and fastest way to upgrade your look in just minutes. The press-on falsies have a unique under-lash application for a totally seamless look and are made with an exclusive self-stick technology that keeps them secure for up to 24 hours. The Impress Manis have a patented super hold adhesive for up to seven days secure hold, and that's perfect for all of you busy mamas out there who don't have a lot of time to spend on glam but want to look your best. I completely get it. Impress No Glue Manis and Impress No Glue Press On Falsies are absolutely a beauty must. You need to try them right now, so get yours today at impressbeauty.com slash lala. And use code LALA at checkout for 25% off Impress Manicure and Press On Falsies. That's impressbeauty.com slash LALA and use code LALA at checkout for 25% off. Um, have you been watching Vanderpump Rules? Of course I have. Let's talk about it. Yeah. It's a, we, we had an episode, what was it, last night? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. How did you feel about it? How are you feeling about the season? Mention it all. Okay, well, yes. I, I'm really liking it. You do like for it. For many reasons. All right. Um, first of all, every single person on the cast is witty and naturally funny, and I love their personalities. I love that. I mean, I love that Tom Sandoval the, the, and the editors and the way he said, it's like I'm Scott Peterson and sports <laughs> being like, didn't he kill his wife? And he's like, allegedly. And he's like, <laughs> he's like dead so serious. Good. Like, it's so it's authentic. so good. It's so <laughs> authentic. Nobody is acting on that show. There was a time when you guys... When they were, you know, casting certain people, hoping that, you know, and it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. So the fact that, like, every single person has a history and has their sense of humor, it's it's great. I mean, Katie and Schwartz with Katie dating, um, having sex with the Max. Okay, so let me remind me. Max is the one that is still wearing the Apple Watch from Sheena? Yes. Okay. Was it an Apple Watch that he got? Yeah. The one before him got a penguin mm-hmm. from Sheena. Max got an Apple Watch. I hope watch. it was a gay penguin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he had decided yet. Oh, okay. Well, but, you know there's a lot of gay penguins. There's so I many. love that. It's so many gay penguins. Yeah. yeah, and then they get they find a great girlfriend who got knocked up and doesn't want to raise a kid, and then the two gay penguins literally take the egg. We should find out about this. I wonder if he is gay, the penguin. Oh. I'll find out. Okay. Um, And then we'll report back to you. <laughs> yeah. And then Max was the one who dated Dana. And she put his necklace in her cat's litter box. And Dana is best friends with Katie. And Max Boyens is best friends with Schwartz. Well, wait, when did when did Sheena date Max? Sheena dated Max before season eight. And they she had a gave thing. him the And they watch. had sex and she gave him the watch. They slept together. They were hanging he was, out. He was between hang the, hang the thing in seven minutes and Brock. Yes. Okay, got it. Okay, so that is all... Amazing. And the location thing, which I don't even know. Do you have to give someone permission for that? Yes. Yes. And that's why. Because I was literally at one point, like I was going to text her and I'm like, we're texting friends. Do you happen to have my location? (laughs) Which is completely fine if you do. No, 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 no. There's no juice there. That's why when when, um, uh, Katie said something about her following locations was an invasion of privacy. Number one, she's not following Katie. Number two, Max gave her permission to follow him. And at any point in time, at any point in time. Three years ago. And it's up to you to go in and stop sharing. To change it. I've shared my location. Like, I remember I was linking up with 
Ariana to go get a uh, coffee in that scene where I'm like, you should defend Sheena. She shared her location with me. So, and I shared mine with her so that we could let production know where okay. the two of us were at what point in time. Mm-hmm. Well, and also, also like single girlfriends, you, you should do that or with your parents oh, no, or bitch. whatever. The moment that scene was over, I clicked unshare. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you will not be knowing where I am. And I think she did the same. Okay. So it's not an invasion of privacy. You are being asked, can so-and-so okay. follow your location? And, so and the, you agree. So probably 50 out of the 56 people at one time gave it to her and then completely forgot. Yeah, but I think during that episode, people went into their phones to see if they were alive. <laughs> I would like to know what the number is now. Yeah. I mean, just when she's sitting in that seat, she's like, I wanted to know where my friends were. I looked at my location. And, <laughs> and, then, then, I looked, and then I looked again. And then again. <laughs> and then again the next morning, I'm like, okay, she should stop talking. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that was, to me, so funny. And I love Katie and Schwartz post-divorce. Do you? you? Uh, Yes, I think they have a nice little funny vibe going. Like, when when they're sitting at your water-tasting thing, yeah, and he's like, I mean, you did, like, fuck my friend. She's like, whatever. You've done a lot worse to me over the years. (laughs) And she's like, why don't you just start with, like, better clothes? He goes, Better clothes. What the fuck? What the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> but he, and he goes back and he goes, oh, you're right. It's cool. I know no, he, he, he shit, but he didn't agree. He has the best zingers, but then he feels bad about them. It's like when he told her season nine, you got kind of a Karen here. <laughs> <laughs> and, then he re, and then he goes, and then and he tracks it's really, back. It's really sexy. I, I love it. Yeah. Like he, that's what I'm saying. Like it's just very, he's so like earnest. And so I think that's really funny. Okay. I got to talk about the side players, okay? Side players, name them. Name them. Name them. Name them. Uh, the assistant. And, and, and we she got needs a full-time Billy spot. Lee back again. Uh-huh. And then we, and what was that tragic pool party that I'm sorry. <laughs> Was Which, that were those extras? What the fuck was that? This oh, was not who? on last night's episode, <laughs> but yeah, the, week, but the one before, before the yeah. week Tom, before, and he's no. in the pool. I'm like, how does Tom <laughs> know these people? Like, I'm literally like, <laughs> li- I, it's okay because I get it. You lost a lot of friends, and you're trying to have a pool party, but like, who are these people? No, let me tell you, there was like a 50 year old mom, and I'm one of those moms. But I think she wasn't hot like me, like in the corner, and I literally <laughs> thought. They just like got people off the street. Yeah, hey, we need some like, people. They you literally good? were like at Ralph's and was like, "What are you guys doing?" By the way, Tom Sandoval could have. No, no, Tom we Sandoval. don't hire extras. We not at all. For the, he met. No, I'm saying he may have hired the extras. Oh, he not could Vanderpump have. Rules. Yeah, I thought you meant Vanderpump Rules. No, the three girls that were in the pool with him, the those blondes ones that came I think, later. Yeah, the girls that came later. Yeah. He met those at the Sir Brunch. He met those. He did? He met those. <laughs> he met them. He met, he met them. Of course, like anybody that comes by, like, is a super fan and of knows course. the whole school. Everyone knows the whole no story. No one's wandering into Sir going, ah, let's try this restaurant. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. It'd be like wandering past Disneyland and be like, I've never heard of this. <laughs> yes, exactly. I wonder if they do serve good pretzels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So, um, that pool party, but like, okay. So first let me, and then of course I got to talk about Joe. 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 <laughs> Joe. Okay. Let's just talk about Joe. Okay. Let's talk Did about it. Did you look at the, vid, the the reel that I sent you of the no, two people I, imitating I Schwartz and Joe? No. Did okay. you send it via Instagram? Oh, so you can't go there? I can, I can go oh, there. Okay. <laughs> I just have to re-download the app and get on. Okay. Then never mind. Okay. So there's these two. They, they do it in these two funny people that I follow, like, like they would imitate succession and everything. They're like good comedic actors. Okay. So they do a scene <laughs> of Schwartz and Joe and, and Joe is just like, <laughs> like doing all these things. And then, and then he's like, Ooh, okay. And then she's like, <laughs> like, I'm like, what are you, what is going on? Her and then she's like, Oh, hi. <laughs> oh my God. And then he, and then she's like, Oh yeah. I mean, are we dating or we're not? Dating? And, <laughs> It just is very odd. So I get why everyone's like, yeah. And it is weird. And it would be annoying if you were Kristen's really good friend. Yes. And then you acted sympathetic to the breakup Mm -hmm. of Katie and Schwartz. And then you weaseled your fucking vagina in there. (laughs) And now you're on the show with a mic pack. But I don't blame the producers for putting a mic pack on her. You have to. Because she actually is in the group. Yes. And like, that's all fine. But like. How annoying that, like, you're like, oh, really, bitch, you know? But I think that's the word, annoying. Yeah. I find her, and I could be up in the night, 
Mm -hmm. But I just look at her and their interactions and I go, this is a human that is harmless. She's too quirky. I mean, I think she's like an inflatable arm man. Yeah. And I think I, I think I say in one of the episodes, I always talk about how, how vaginas don't just fall on dicks. And I say, in this case, I think a vagina may just have fallen on a dick. (laughs) Knowing both of them. It just doesn't seem like there's much thought. It's like, we just do, which can be dangerous. People who don't think things through, that's, it gets a little scary, but like, I look at her and I've, Spoken okay. to her briefly and watched their interaction. I'm like, this is not someone. Well, it's not malicious now intent. Listen, no. I don't see that. Now, listen, obviously things are edited. But when I was watching, I think the previous episode where they go on the swans in the water. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just felt like you think she's. Okay, maybe she's not out to ruin someone's life, but she's a thirst bucket. I'm sorry. She's dying to be on the show, which is okay. Who doesn't want to be on the hottest show on TV? That's okay. But the fact that she comes and there, she's like, did I ever tell you my turtle story? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, so now you're coming with, like, bits? <laughs> like, are you, like, <laughs> writing out, like, so I had a turtle, and I walked it on a leash, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then it fell down a drain. Did that really happen? Yeah, she talked about That was about the, the story, and it, like, came out of nowhere. Now, granted, it could have been editing. Maybe he mentioned something about it, but they're on swans. It's not like they were riding turtles. I and remember she was, like, the swan I had a turtle. scene. Yeah, she's I remember just, it well. I, just, I was like, I watched, I think I saw it for the second time, and that's when it clicked into me. I'm like, oh, she's just trying to come with bits so that she's like, let me secure my spot. You know? I have like, to say, Vanderpump not- is not, in my opinion, the show to do that. It's just too real. There's it's some, way too real. There's some celebrity. No, I think that's who she is. I, you guys, she's quirky and a little strange. She's quirky. Remember at your, oh, you were there at the uh, live show. Remember that's why the first was she time? at the she live there? show? I don't know. No, no, I was at not Lala's live show. You mean Sheena's live show? No, this was at Irvine Improv. I do not remember when, seeing remember her when, when Lala was a guest of mine. No, this was Irv. I thought you were there, Heather. Maybe not. It was the first Give Them Lala live show you ever did. Ever did ever? Chris and Dodie was there. Joe was there. Oh, oh, well, that's why she was there. She was with Dodie. Okay, but she was like running back and forth, helping the waiters. Oh. <laughs> She's just a strange person, and. And there's nothing wrong She's with that. A, maybe a, like a little too earnest. Like just how they were saying, like, you know, Tom Sandoval is doing, is doing too much to be nice. Doing the most. Like, yeah. let me run, pa- let me chase the, the pizza guy down and see if he has a packet of ranch in there, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and they're like, oh my God, he's doing too much. He's trying too hard. But you guys, he did that shit even before. That's what I thought. I remember mm-hmm. like, you like saying that, yeah. It's, it's so interesting to me because the only... The only people that are trying to rewrite history are the fans. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. The only people that are rewriting history right now are fans. What do you mean by but that? They, but you, the Meaning cast is who said that. Say, but the cast said he's doing too much now. Well, All by the way, I have a feeling that. about my cast too. I feel like yeah. the, I'm after the reunion, I look at them very differently. I very much do. But I can't talk about that right. yet. Right. Mm-hmm. You can't talk about that. But... but this is who he's always been. He's mm. always been the guy paying for true, true. for people's engagement parties. He's been the guy to chase down the man for the ranch. He's <laughs> doing the same shit he's always done. It's just now he's fucked you over, so it's annoying to you. Right. On but- this podcast, Heather, what is your viewpoint on Sandoval and how people are, how he's been this season? Ariana, is she too hard on him? What is your thoughts on that? Well, as someone watching it, I find it very intriguing. Okay. Okay. So I kind of see it all. And of course, you relate things like the reason reality TV is so good, especially Rihanna Pump, is there usually somebody can relate something to their own life. Right. So I get, you know, that she's like, I now she bought a house, but at this time, she didn't want to leave, or maybe she did want to su- make him suffer a little. So, th- so what? How many divorces have been like dragged out because mm-hmm. one person is like, "I'm gonna, you're gonna fucking pay for what you did in this marriage, whether it was cheat or leave or whatever." And I'm, I'm not gonna be amicable. I'm not gonna make it easy for you, and that's my choice. So, like, if that's it, or also that she's just a disorganized person and the thought of moving is a lot, which I get. Like, I get all that. I love. Um, I personally love seeing her telling him off. I feel like we never see a woman, 
assert herself like in a fight like that. I feel like it's really real. And he also then can use that and be like, see, guys, this is why I fucked another person. She's mm. a meanie. She's a meanie cat. Like, so, but, and then everyone has to sit around and watch it. But you're, you're doing that because you guys really are friends and you're really watching a show. Mm -hmm. And he definitely has to be part of it. And I give her props for not being like, I'm not going to show up. She's showing up to the stuff. But then the real part of her is like, like, I hate you. And I want you guys all to know, like, he wasn't good with the dog. I'm fucking pissed. It cost but, me $6,000. Right. But the dog was also eating shit when they were still together. And that's where I'm having a hard time is I'm like, this is not new stuff. Right. That the dog ate 500 laxative pills, hair dye. Like. Then he, then I hear you. The one thing that bugs me about that, don't lock your dog in a room for four. Don't lock a dog in a room for four hours. To me, that's what threw me I, off. I think what happened is, what she was trying to get across is, I don't think that Tom purposely was like, I'm going to lock the dog in so that he, the dog who's a little off runs havoc mm -hmm. in the room. Yeah. I think it was sort of like, oh, shit, I didn't realize I shut the door in the dog. Right. A hundred percent. No, he didn't mean to lock the dog in there. Happened, but then that. in her defense, again. And he could have like, left the door open. You made sure. I mean, we he all He could have left the door open and Anne could have walked yeah. by and realized, oh, this is open. And the dog could have been with the takeout container on the ground and no one even you noticed. You didn't even see her. Right? But okay. why is a takeout container sitting? Garbage. Well, she, she doesn't want to go downstairs when he's down there. Like, I get it all. And I get why... The cast is like, um, the friends and everybody are like, but you're doing fine. Like, you've made all this money. You've got, The lemonade is, like, flowing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, yeah, she got all these opportunities and she took them and that's great. But that doesn't mean that she should get over this any quicker. And that, if I'm just paying devil's advocate because I, I see what you're saying on the show and I get it. But at the same time, it's like, when I've had stuff like that happen with me, people are like, well, why are you still harping on this thing that this person did to you that was so awful? You are doing great. You know, your show didn't suffer. You are gone every weekend killing it. Like, why do you, why can't you just let it go? You're allowed, I get it. You're allowed to not let it go and go insane on him. Got it. The problem I'm having here is you're using all of these words that I very much feel. I can literally sit here and have empathy because I've felt those same things. The difference here is you choose to stay in the house and everyone can say he should have left. I agree, but we now know who Tom Sandoval is. Tom Sandoval is the guy that, that has sex with your best friend in your home while you're you know, mourning the death of your grandmother. He's shown. So let's not sit here and be like, I can't believe he wouldn't move out. He's shown who he is. So now we have to take control of the things we can control, which are ourselves. If he's making you feel this way and you're staying in the house, I got questions. If he makes you lose your mind like this and you are traumatized by what he has done, I want to know how you can move on to a new boyfriend in 10 days. I'm genuinely wondering this because when someone's using the same words that I'm using and I feel for you, I want you to shed knowledge on how you can stay in the same house and get a boyfriend in 10 days. How do you compartmentalize? I don't understand it. Those are all good points. But I think the same argument goes when people are like, why didn't you tell about your abuser? Like, mm -hmm. why didn't you go? Why did you stay married? Why did you? It's like, I don't really think we can ever figure out why someone does or doesn't do what they did. She found the other boyfriend in 10 days because it felt great and she liked having that. She didn't want to move on in the house because she's like, fuck it, why should I be inconvenienced? Let him fucking suffer. Maybe she's not even bothered by him. Maybe she's like, I'm glad that he's bothered by me. I, you know, we don't really, like, it was a pretty big deal. And the other thing is, being that it's public, even if she's having a great day and she just got a deal with the battery company and, you know, she's happy... It's like she could still open something on her phone and be reminded of the humiliation. Of course. And how did you not know? And you're dumb. And how did you not see it? And you deserve it because you didn't have sex with him. Of course. And all of that. So then 
then that can set her back. Like maybe she's doing great and then that sets her back and then the cameras are up the next day and that's when she snaps at the beach, you know, like. Right, mm. and I understand. I fully understand. But we're talking about a man, Tom Sandoval, who season nine ha ha was screaming or season, whatever season we brought on these random people, season eight, losing his goddamn mind on everybody. And Ariana's sitting across from me saying, the thing I love about, that's what I love about Tom Sandoval. And I said that he, he yells at women. Wait, she goes, when, no, wait, he, when was he, what women was he yelling he at? He has consistently been unkind to me. He's okay. consistently been unkind yeah, I've to seen, Katie. Okay. And who has never come to anyone's defense? Ariana Maddox. Not once. She falls back. Let's it happen. And now suddenly, because you're on the receiving end of his misogynistic ways... You're looking for backup? I, again... There's I can, only one I, way to look at it. No, but I can totally <laughs> relate to that, too, because, you know, you know a personal thing I went through mm -hmm. with a friend, and I saw him do this to other women, and I was like, well, there's two sides to the story. Right. He's not doing it to me. He's a delight to me. He can't. And once it happened to me and other people in my life, were like, la, 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 I don't think it happened. I don't know the story. I don't care. I'm going to just go on because he's pleasant to me. And then now, now like, exponentialize that by, like, sex and marriage, you know, relationship. So all your points are right, but at the same time, like, she was the girlfriend. She, she look, she did the bad stuff, too. She cheated on with him when he was with Kristen Doty. She liked it very much being in that passenger seat. But so what can't happen here is when my life went to shit, I was grilled by Lisa Vanderpump. I was grilled by my cast members. Not right. one person said, you know what, let's ease up on law. She probably should have known, but she didn't. There's a baby involved. I'm asking the questions that I think a lot of the audience would want to know, Right. Bottom line, we're filming a television show. It's an ensemble cast. And I understand that it can be uncomfortable. But if my ex were a part of Vanderpump Rules, I would have to have uncomfortable conversations with him. It's just the name of the game. I, I actually had prepared myself season 10 for them to bring my ex into the mix. While you were still together or after? While we, when we had broken up, I was fully prepared. You're just thinking worst case scenario. They're going to bring him on. I had a conversation with production. I said, two things are going to happen. You bring him back, I walk. Or you bring him back and you cut not a word that I say because I'm mentioning it all. Well, they can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, there was a lot of stuff happening. And I'm so happy for the opportunities that Ariana has gotten. She deserves them all. I always say, when someone opens the door, they can't take credit for you taking down the whole house, right? Ariana took over the whole house. And she deserves that. She has proven to be a talented actress, a talented dancer. One has nothing to do with the other. I went on to this season, and when things didn't make sense, I asked questions. And was essentially looked at like someone who doesn't support women anymore. Someone who's jealous. Well, I Now, you've seen the whole season. But for me, who's watched this many, I don't think you're appearing that way. As I, someone who's watching it, I don't think it's appearing that way. I think with I the think most, yeah. Yeah, I think you're, I don't think you're coming off bad. And I'm not just saying that because you're my friend and you're sitting across from me. I don't think what you're saying comes off bad at all. I think when you had the conversation with her on the street corner, I thought that was a really good conversation. And she was receptive. And I also saw her side of like, am I supposed to do some big posts, like stand down Ariana fans? don't write Sheena. And she was like, I'm just not saying anything Hope, because there's such, it's such a, at that time, everybody would write an article about everything with a headline, page six. You know, Ariana says, you know, Sheena didn't mean it. So I get why she didn't do that. But then she did like reach out. So your words were taken in. Right. She did see it. But I also saw her, her being like, you guys are, you know, because you guys are going to start to accept Tom and he's going to be a good friend to you, and he's going to be sweet and charming, and he's going to run after the car for the ranch, and eventually you're going to have stuff, and then it's going to be like, well, I think we just, you know, let, let's not even put Ariana through this. We won't invite her. Mm. And then before she knows it, she is the one on the outs. And when she said that on the street corner, I'm like, that is very possible. And it's not yours and Sheena's fault for 
allowing him back in or or James for allowing him back in. It's not your fault, but it might be, she might be the casualty in the end. I have to say with last night's episode, that's the first time I saw you and thought, oh, this is going in an interesting direction. And not because of, look, I'm an outsider, so I can say this. I'm not blaming editing, but there are certain things that, um, you know, Ariana would say something and then the editors would flash back to certain to like uh uh look like she had support an anger. Oh, her oh. Uh, what she was saying. She'd say like, "Oh, well, I did this." And then they'd flash back to all the times that she did that to support what she was saying. And then like, you know, they've got moments of you like saying the trash bag thing or like keeping certain cuts in the beach. And again, it's not the editors. I get it. But I am wondering, now this feels like a turning point for me. I want to know, okay, next week what is the episode going to look like? Like what what direction is it going? It's it's just interesting. And I, and I also like that you were like, look, I'm coming from this place because I, and this is why I interpret it as someone watching it. I think you're, you're like, I wasted too much time being so bitter and angry and I'm never going to get that time back. No. So I think in you counseling her, you were like, no one's saying that you shouldn't be hurt, but if there's a way to redirect your energy you know, so that you don't lose days and you don't leave, lose hours and you don't, you know, We're like, I think that was a, a, I think that was like a, a girlfriend kind of thing to say. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was making it about you. I think that was like, look, I'll never get that year back that I was just like one to fucking kill somebody. Well, so, I remember being really appreciative of when my dad died and I was acting out and she had sat me down and said, like, when my dad died this is what happened and how the group treated me. And it was almost like she's she's showing me a window into what this looks like with this group. And so when I, when I bring things up that I've experienced, I'm hoping that I can show her a window. And there, there are nuances, right? Like she, she may have not as been as close with her dad as I was with my dad. There's so many nuances. No one situation is right. the same. But... Like with the dog thing and she doesn't want to talk to him and have a productive conversation. The only thing I can relate to that is her dog is her baby. Ocean is my baby. There are times where in my situation, I said, I'm never talking to this human again. And then something happens where we have to have a productive conversation where I have to let every single thing go for the well-being of my daughter. In this situation, the dog almost died. You have to now while you're in the house, put everything he's done to you aside and have a productive conversation. As hard as that fucking is. Yeah, and I thought you came off great in that. I don't think that was... Well... But she was just really <laughs> still, like, heated. And I think she wants... It's like when you are fighting with someone, and sadly people do this with their children. Yeah. Where they're like, see? See what your dad did? Mm. Fucking unbelievable. And the kid's like, a nine, what? Like, <laughs> I feel like she... <laughs> She, at that moment at the water thing at the house, when she was like, don't talk to me, and she's yelling at him and everything, she just wanted, she wanted to be performative. She wanted you guys to see that. And it, of course, made everybody uncomfortable, but it was a real, real moment. And it's like why in, when you're not on a reality show, most people lose friends or pick sides or whatever, because it really doesn't work. I mean, it really doesn't work, except that you guys are on a show I mean, that's what was very hard about filming this season. Yeah. And I love that you're here because you're a reality head just like yeah. I am and you know what goes into it. Right. And there's the thing I love about Vanderpump Rules is it's so authentic. And all of us have a connection from years ago. And it's this this web that like you cannot make up. Right. And then something happens where not only does it affect the friend group, but we've been filming a television show with each other most of them, for 11 years, okay? So how are we going to keep our sanity and our inner peace while also doing what we love to do, which is film a show? It's also responsible for paying our bills. How are we supposed to do that? And so when I came into this season... I think it was hard for everybody. I think a lot of people were living in the comments section. They knew that Ariana mm -hmm. had a lot of fans and they were not about to go against her and get the smoke. I think that's where I get glad that I don't look at comments 
because I'm so terrified of them that I kind of just get to say whatever I want. And had maybe I looked in the comment section, I'd be doing the same thing that they're doing. Yeah. And then knowing, like, I support my friend so much. Like, I've been here. Rip his fucking head off. Then all the nuances of living with him still and having questions about how you can get a new boyfriend. But then how the fuck do we make a show that I love so much and it's single-handedly responsible for the opportunities that have come my way for the last 10 years of my life? Yeah. You know, where I'm looking around at everybody and I'm like, we're an ensemble cast. Y'all better not, you be, you guys better not fuck this up. Because there's more at stake than just yourselves. I think it's so good. Well, like, I, I think it's so real and like funny <laughs> and good and interesting. Like, I think it's better than last season. Mm -hmm. Really? I like this season and I don't watch it. Yeah. Any. Okay. I, well, wait, last season was just the season we didn't know they were fucking, right? And then we, we had, and then we had like, like the three extra episodes. Then we yeah. had like three extra episodes, right? Mm -hmm. Of when the demise. Yeah. But like, that was only fun once we knew, and then you could go back. Go back and watch it. And yeah. Like, oh, but when it was gosh. happening and they were just going glamping and and the, the fake Schwartz trying to kiss Raquel, that like wasn't interesting to me. And yeah, you know what? Maybe it would have been a completely different thing. I mean, I thought before we found this out, we had a pretty interesting season 10 happening. Just like as I lived it, I'm like, okay, this is interesting. This season, season 11, the finale is where fourth wall is broken and I lose my goddamn mind. <laughs> and I think there's going to be a shift with my cast. I actually know there is because I've already lived it. And there's going to be a huge shift I think with the audience and I will be staying off of socials and telling my team I don't want to know shit because I lose my goddamn mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm that's going to be, look, I, <laughs> I think, you know, yeah, I think it was, I think it's a very intriguing and like very real. And that's why I was like, okay, I know where Lala is coming from, but I also know where Ariana's coming from, and which is why after I was watching it last night, knowing I was going to see you today, I was like, you know, okay, I'm going to tell her what I really think. And I mean, I'm glad that you're like, I'm glad that we're like having a real conversation. I'm not just like, come on your show and be like, you're the best, Lala. No, you I say don't. And I think everything you're saying is right. I'm just kind of seeing to where she's coming from. And I bet like she's watching last night and probably like, it's like when that scene where she goes, and I've been this girl too, where she's had a couple drinks and she's still angry about what's happened. It doesn't matter if she's made a million dollars. What's fucking- No, it doesn't. Money doesn't happen. Like I've had things happen to me and I'm like, did it turn out in the end to be okay because of like, maybe there was some, you know, good thing financially out of it. Yeah, but if I could go back six months to take away the trauma, I would have taken away the trauma. Like, it right. wasn't life. For her, maybe it was life-changing money, but, like, still, like, she's still living in the same house, still in the same show. It wasn't mm -hmm. like all of a sudden she had three private jets. You know no, what I mean? No, and it's good. not like the new house is some monstrosity. Yeah, it's, it's like, like she's just little three a way bedroom. to, like, right. get on her feet. So I think when she sees that he brings a girl— <laughs> the 25-year-old girl, and she's just <laughs> like, I thought that was so real and being like, Oh, hi. Yeah, um, you're 25. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Being a friend, maybe don't get with a 41-year-old narcissist. I mean, now she's going to watch that, and she's going to be a little bit mortified. Yeah. That's not— She claims that, she's not watching this season. Okay. Well, mm. if she did, if it was me, I would be like, okay, Embarrassed. Heather. But I can see. I could, I could In feel the moment. it. And a couple drinks, and the cameras, and he's there, and he's bringing this girl, and you're like, oh, you, you, you think you're going to have a mic pack on next month, you fucking loser? Let me tell you something, girl. Mm -hmm. You're 25, you're being, you know, da-da-da-da, like, whatever. I don't even think, I don't even know if you dated that girl at all, but, like, whatever. I <laughs> kind of loved it, just because I was like, yeah, that's, you know, you want to act like you're cool and you don't care. No, but and once you let the up, release, when yeah. you release one sentence, it is like a purge and an intoxicating high to mm. just and be I like, mean, personally, yeah. listen, I've watched the show forever. Ariana, I can't even tell you if she's ever had a storyline until now. But that's the other thing people are forgetting. <laughs> like, but that's why I feel like that's why it's kind of popping for her this season because she's we, the haven't, story line. we haven't really seen her fight or personality or anything. Like there was a, I, I believe strongly in sketch comedy 
And then there was the I, I bisexual at the parade. I don't remember anything else, like w- other than her just looking really cute and and being a delight on the show. Like I don't remember her driving anything, which is not her fault. Like whatever. If her deal was to sit in the back seat to Tom Sandoval and have her life, and now, you know, so that's why I think it's interesting. No, I agree with you. And I think that's another reason why I was very nervous going into this season, knowing that our main story, just like last year, the main story was Katie and Schwartzy. This year, it was to- the the aftermath of Tom and Ariana. And I'm sitting here going, our main storyline is lying in the hands of someone who has really never brought anything to this show. And I'm fucking concerned. And I mean, what you have, I see that, but also what you went through with your ex, I mean, the juice, if you, if that was to ever be revealed, it would have been a different story too. Well, that's why I, when I had the phone call where there was maybe a time that they were going to get him back, I said, we can go one of two ways. And I think it's, I think. God was protecting you. I don't think it was would be worth it. But I'm saying I think pe- people and audience and everything would have seen you in a much different light if they if this was portrayed on TV, what you actually went through. Yeah. So, you know, they can't, you know, they don't want them talking about in things that you can't share. So, right. you know, so like, I can see where you're coming from for that. I'm just so happy that you are someone who knows good television and you think it's a good season. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's a simple truth. No matter who you are, mental health challenges can affect you and how you manage them can make all of the difference. That's why everyone should have access to mental health support that meets them where they are and helps them get through. BetterHelp provides online therapy on your schedule. It's flexible, simple to use, and more affordable than in-person therapy. Connect with a licensed therapist selected just for you. Learn more at BetterHelp.com. That's BetterHelp.com. Okay, so then Anne. Let's talk about Anne. I love Anne, by the way. I love Anne, too. Mind you, she DM'd me. Comic relief. She DM'd me. And what'd she say? First off, we lived across the street from each other when I lived in Los Feliz. She was like, she gave me her address, and I was like... Girl, I lived right across the street from you. But she gave me some tea. I'm going to coffee with her. I'm not going to share any of it Shut now. Shut the fuck up. You're getting coffee with Anne? Yes, but she was like, I love, oh, by the way, she DM'd and was like, I love the show. I thank you guys for mentioning me. <laughs> yeah, we Should love Anne. Should give them Yes. <laughs> and she we said, love Anne. but she gave me tea on some <gasps> stuff we talked about. I'm going to go to coffee and then I'll spill what I can. But <gasps> she is She's a but little, even if you just spill it not on air, oh, you got to tell oh, us. I'll tell you. I'll okay. tell you. She knows. She knows. But uh, what do you think of Anne, Heather? I mean, Anne is why it's very hard to hire an assistant in this town. <laughs> why? Wait, why? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> she's doing podcasts. She's talking shit about her boss on camera to, to someone else and saying, I want to work for you. <laughs> She's doing True. confessionals. She's like, I mean, my, are you kidding me? Like, no. But oh my I God. Tell you, can I tell thank you? Thank God you know, AI exists because like, I'm fucking terrified. <laughs> <laughs> the people that not just Tom, but also Ariana surround themselves with. I mean, Ariana's, uh, Ariana's friends do podcasts like Brad by Brad. <laughs> or Logan like posts things about not going to heaven. I'm like, if, if Logan and Leo ever fucking showed up on a podcast or posted about Vanderpump Rules, I would have their heads on a platter. <laughs> if Jessica went and started talking, like what? Well, if they, The people well, that both of them did, surround themselves they, with is so scary. Thank God and so entertaining. If Logan and Leo, who right. I love, yes. like, you know, whatever. Let's say they're going to come do Juicy Scoop. First of all, I would let you know it. They should let you know it. We would only talk about probably not Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> And, you know, like, I think if someone's going to go do that and they're so close to someone, like, they got to give them a heads up. Like, hey, I got to ask you this podcast. It's about um, fitness. Um, I'm going in right away and saying, even though Law is my best friend, don't fucking ask me about her. And so if you don't want me to only talk about fitness, then don't book me. And sometimes they'll be like, oh, yeah, okay. And then they might not book them. But anybody going after the 32 lead in, you know, Anne, the assistant, it's not to find out where Anne went to college and hear about her favorite, you know, 
pasta dish. Well, oh legally, my God. Too, you know, it's to like talk about, which is like, yeah. hey, girl, I don't blame you. You got a job. They put you on camera. Make it pop. But and like, she's like this close in the FaceTime. Oh my God, Ariana, I don't know where for you. Like, when I saw Anna in a confessional, by the way, I have two viewpoints. Number one, like legally, she, it's funny. She's funny. Yeah, she's, she's been, almost like when they you hired could, her, could not have cast a better she's person. She's a character. <laughs> yeah. Like when they hired her, she knew she was in sketch comedy. It's a different thing. When you hire an assistant, in my opinion, who moves to Hollywood to be an actor, there's only one way it can go. I mean, so yes, does she have the pod cast called we signed an NDA like she's gonna make it a thing when she can make it a thing that being said when I saw her in the confession I was like fuck yeah and then she's like <laughs> laughing and like, I knew it was big when they I brought her in for she's it she's like I'm in this pink outfit because I'm going to Barbie she's like, yeah. and she's like I'm sweating and I was like and you are I knew. she walked up three steps she's like oh hi <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't know like <laughs> I just think she's, she's fucking fantastic. No, and then I'm also like, is. the she's fact gold. that they're all like, oh my God, you have to pick up from the, the pool party. I'm like, listen, some people need to do housework, whether you're a professional housekeeper or you're a jack of all trades. Yeah. So that's why it's like, which so is like, she cleans know, up his underwear. Raquel? And did, Wait, did I, Anne know about Raquel? I don't think Anne knew about Raquel. The other people, a lot of things are saying, <laughs> did, did Sheena know that if she had, she must have not had Sandoval's or Raquel's. Someone wrote, no, Raquel. No, that's what, one stop. of the one, the big tell yeah. was that Raquel stopped sharing her location with Sheena. Uh, and that's when she went to Big Bear. Mm. Yes. And that's when she was like, And again, that's like, why Joe, is, that's why is Joe wrong. can't really be trusted because she was part of that. Yeah. And I get it. So was Schwartz. He knew too. I get it. I get it. But like, I think mm. people can be skeptical of her. They don't, I mean, come on. Like, you're, you're going to turn Katie into liking her. It's never happening. Wait, turn Karen you're, into you're what? You're going to turn Katie into liking Joe. It's never going to happen. Mm. I mean, Katie barely likes anybody. She's certainly <laughs> not going to start liking <laughs> She's not going to start liking Jill. I mean, I love Katie. I think she likes people. Like, she's certainly, like, that is what is great about Katie is, like, she just fucking tells it like it is. And then— Or doesn't. When, in yeah. the workout scene <laughs> when she was, like, this— And Jenna was, like, do you feel, do you love it or something? And Katie was, like, no. I was, like, yeah, I feel so you. Funny. I think, yeah. No, I would fall over dead if there was something that Katie was, like, I really enjoy this. I'd be, like, <laughs> d- enjoy? Re- can you repeat <laughs> that? Okay. Oh my gosh! Okay, my so face who would hurts. you? Okay, who would you rather be stuck on an island with? Who are my names? We and there's just we don't just know when cast. you're gonna be rescued. Okay. Okay. Billy Lee. Okay. Joe. Okay. Or Ann. Yeah. Ann. <laughs> Honestly, I think Billy Lee. That was really? my second. Yeah, because okay. I think we could have productive conversations. She's a bad bitch. She could like really do damage with like we got to hunt. Yeah. She can she, crack a she, coconut. She can crack a coconut. Like, I just feel like she would be someone who's, like, w- a well-rounded person, right? Yeah, like, we're going to get this shit yeah. done. Joe like, would Anne would be like, I don't know where the fuck we are. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my like, God. I can't believe I'm on an island with Lala. <laughs> I never want this to end. There's a ship goes by. She's like, I hope they don't see us. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, Billy Lee. Okay, really. good, good. Um, okay, ache and relief. Heather, we do this yes. every episode. Easton, oh, you, you start, start us off. You'll go last so that okay, you kind of know. All right, I can go. Mine's going to be really stupid in a sense, but my NCAA bracket, mm-hmm. it, my ache is that it's trash, so that's done, and that okay. was a real ache. And okay. my relief is that I don't have to care about it anymore, <laughs> and we got March Madness still coming. Final four, let's Yay. go. I love it. Yes, love it. ball. Okay, <laughs> what is yours, Jess? <laughs> Mine is... Uh, I am 32 and I have hormonal acne all of a sudden. I think it's because I got off the birth control pill like six months ago. Are you trying to get pregnant? I I was just going to ask what's coming. Absolutely not. I'm trying to not take artificial hormones. Hormones. Good for you. That makes me very happy. But now I'm getting hormonal acne. You can't see it right now. Um, But uh, my... That's my ache. And my relief is I don't have one, so let me know. Like, do I start getting crazy facials? Dermaplaning. You know what? what You're really, really lucky that I'm about to give birth soon because if it keeps up, I'm going to give you a little bit of breast milk in like a little pea tree. And I put it on. And then you just put it on your face. Okay, so breast milk. And then if that works, I'm buying it off the black market from now uh, on. Vitamin A. You should be taking a vitamin A supplement. Really? Yes. Oh, I'm adding this. Thank you. You're welcome. Also, I want to say... 
Have you tried those little acne stickers? Oh, those yes. are the, they I, do. I feel like I those are them. the best. Like literally it brings the pus up for the next morning. And I you're done. swear by them as well. They're yeah. the best. Yeah. Um, okay. My ache of the week. Um, to be honest, I don't really have one. I'm thriving this week. My wow. daughter is healthy. Her bounce back has happened like that. Um, I will say my relief of the week was that I got a facial. And I was under the impression that the only facials to get involved lasers and injecting things into your face. <laughs> and no. com come to find out, you can get a facial that is pregnancy friendly. And there's a lot of them out there. Yeah, you sure can. <laughs> I'm you like, sure wait can. a minute. And massages Where you too. don't inject anything into my face? <laughs> what kind of facial is this? <laughs> I can't yeah. believe you don't get normal facials. Those are the best. Well, now I'm going to start. I did like a dermaplaning one. Oh, yeah. That was fabulous. Taking um, out, shaving the face. Can you believe that like we only started shaving our faces after Kelly Dodd screamed at Shannon Bedore and said, shave your face. <laughs> <laughs> and now everyone shaves their face. Like we were always told like you just had to live with your fucking peach Do you Otherwise shave you'll your have face? a beard. Since I saw that episode, <laughs> I started doing it and I... Love it. And I can't believe it's like a huge industry now mm. that really didn't exist like seven years ago. No, you're right. Usually, like, I'm pretty consistent with taking a Gillette men's razor to the face. But dermaplaning is, like, so close to the skin. I highly recommend it. I also think a new thing that no one's going to care about is uh, nipple covers anymore. Oh, it's no. It's all about having hard Pasties? nips. Pasties? Oh, I yeah, love I was nipples. at a boutique and I saw the little silicone nipple covers. I go, have those dropped a lot in sales? And she said, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I said, only... I can imagine why. I mean, people are you buying bras with nips out. Yeah. yeah. But in my day. You had to cover them. Well, you, had, like, you didn't want two or you don't want one hard and one asleep. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That is the puffy nip, you old puff nip. <laughs> but the only time I wear a nipple cover is if like you can see that it's like there's a nipple there. Yeah. Like, like the, the whole color, areola. The color of it. Right. Um, what's your ache and relief, Heather? Oh my gosh, my ache. I don't know. I had such a great week Good. in La Quinta and Easter and, oh, I got it. Okay, so maybe the ache is kids getting older, but the relief was we had the best Easter egg hunt we've ever had with yeah. 21, 19, 18, and 16-year-olds. <laughs> and I you put, put money in the eggs? We put money in the eggs, candy in the eggs, and then I made um, challenges that they had to do. <gasps> So once they got all their eggs, they opened them. And so, and they were things to like entertain us and make us feel good. So okay. it was my sister's family. So it would be like, what makes your mom um, better than all the other moms? So then we got like a nice compliment. And then it would be like, imitate your dad in the morning. So that would be funny. I made like Brandon do a rap. That's so, so like, cute. And they had That's to do all, cool. they had to do it. Like my one nephew. They had, had to got, turn into see, show ponies yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Why are we drink? Dance, yeah, yeah. Yeah. dance. <laughs> so it was really fun, and I don't think any of that stuff you have to stop doing. And then we did. Um, Peter got this little like gingerbread house, but it was for Easter at Costco. Okay. And so then the kids like put it together, and then Brandon was like, "Oh, let's film it like selling Sunset." So I got into a slutty outfit with a blazer, and I <laughs> and I sold the house for eighteen million. And we did a little <laughs> video, and he he did the whole thing. Wait, we did, did you like, post it? And we found the music like. I'm a bad bitch, gotta do today. You know, all those songs that they do, like selling sunset, like, I'm bad. And then just like, zoom in and like do like, he did like a zoom overhaul of the candy. And I, yeah. So, <gasps> wait, uh, did you post the, it yet? That's so yeah, fun. it's on okay, my, good. It's on my I, reels, but I guess you can't go to it. No, I can re download the app and view <laughs> and then delete it again. <laughs> Just go on that one I of our love phones. It. Wow, That's this was awesome. a fabulous podcast. So can I tell you where I'm going to be for my stand-up? Yes, oh, plug. So, get the plug. I was just yeah. going to ask you to plug. This Friday and Saturday, I will be in Palm Beach at the Kravitz Center. Two shows a night. <gasps> Everything at heathermcdowell.net. Lots of other cities. Pechanga. I'm doing Pechanga. I'm doing Denver. I'm doing um, Scottsdale. All, all So many good things coming up. Yeah. And where can people follow you to like see schedules and watch you be fucking hilarious all the time? HeatherMcDonald.net is where you go to get the schedule and that's the only place you should buy the tickets. Do not Google Heather and Scottsdale because you'll end up paying more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go to HeatherMcDonald.net and then of course at Heather McDonald on um, Instagram, TikTok. All the things. And then obviously Juicy Scoop. And Juicy Scoop. Wherever course, you get your Tuesday, podcast. To every Tuesday, Thursday. Love it. 
It's Love so it. good. It's Love the only it. podcast I listen to besides Dateline and and this Lala. One. <laughs> um, you Me guys, too. thank you, what? Heather. I, and I love, I love it. Get the, I, I listen to yours, and I also do the Dateline, and I really love it. Driving out to the desert. Oh, that's exactly that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I do. Otherwise, you get kind of tired, and you're like, "Wait, what's going on?" Like no. it keeps you thinking, and then, and then, like you're imagining it as like you're as you're driving. You're like, "I wonder if that's what the house looks like." One hundred percent. I do the exact same thing, and now every time I drive, I'm like, "I Is wonder there a body if in there's car. a body." It, like a yeah. car's pulled over, and I'm like, they murdered someone, yeah. and they're dumping at, the body. Yeah, you almost feel like you're in in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I love it. Um, you guys, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. I love y'all, and I'll catch you next week. Thank you so much for watching another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe. Did I get all three? I'm getting really good at that. <laughs>